Uh, hi there. Uh, another installment of uh, RTN 101. And today we're going to talk about uh, rover communications. Uh, some of the options you have for communicating with a rover. One of the, one of the main things you got to deal with on a rover is you've got to communicate with the... Um, don't get crushed there. The central processing center of a, an RTN if they can stand on its own feet. And the rover has to talk to it. The rover needs to get its corrections from the RTN. Now it can get it directly from a, uh, a reference station that has a, a phone number with a, like a dial-up modem or a modem bank because uh, with a single dial-up modem only one person can uh, attach that at one time. RTN uh, channeling uh, data in corrections from a bunch of stations and creating corrections from groups of stations can push that out through uh, an authentication server or more common than that, Ntrip. And this is all based on internet. Of course, Ntrip is uh, what network transportation of RTCM over internet protocols. Some really clever people in Germany came up with that, and, and they're seldom wrong. So the, um, the rover has to talk to the central processing center, or has to be able to receive what the processing center is sending out, in case it's uh, just a one-direction communication. So the rover essentially needs to get to the internet. If you're using up like an old dial-up modem, that's a phone getting to a phone line. It's a little bit more sophisticated than that now. It's things of everything's gone digital. So let's say for purposes of this discussion, you're getting to the internet to talk to the central processing center. Now, getting to the internet at home, oh, to heck with it. Um, getting to the internet at home typically involves a uh, modem, which you plug into a phone line or a cable or, or a VSAT dish, a satellite dish, and one of it goes to whatever that is, and the other one goes out to your device. Well, that works if you're surveying from uh, inside your living room. But cellular is the main way that a lot of, uh, a lot of RTN work. And this is from many years ago. This is a dedicated cellular modem. It takes a SIM card out of a cell account, same uh, little tiny white card you find under your battery in your cell phone and it is set up to go directly to a particular uh, IP or service and from that your data collector can talk to the uh, internet and your software can go in and either go to Ntrip or a particular IP or something like that. This is cool. There's some of these that, uh, that slip into little boxes underneath the data collectors on certain rovers. Uh, with this one we had to attach a, a uh, big VCR battery to it in a backpack and that was uh, in the CDPD days but there's more modern versions of that. Well more common still is just taking your cell phone and getting a data account attached to it. What we mean by a data account is uh, don't go into the mall in the person, the, the teeny bopper at the, inter, uh, at the uh, cell phone booth and say hey I want to get to the internet with my cell phone. Well, they're going to sell you all kinds of data packages with a browser on board and all that and text messaging and God knows what. And whatever you do, don't mention the word GPS. What they're going to do is try to sell you a built-in GPS capability in a cell phone. Uh, this big honking Motorola here has GPS built into it, but has nothing to do with what you want to do with it in the field. You want this to work as a dumb modem. It can have voice on it, but you can have uh, data um, added to the account. Uh, on my uh, on my Motorola voice phone, um, well, although it's a government account, we you know for like another 20 a month I get unlimited data. This needs to work as a modem. It needs to work as one of these. And the buzzword you can use when you're talking to the cell person there at the mall but is uh, I need the account to be able to let me attach this to a laptop as a modem. Even though you're not going to attach it to a laptop as a modem, you can attach it to a data collector. So 
many options on that. There's that. All the different carriers have different buzzwords for their data accounts, and in this case, you could attach it to your data collector through a serial cable. Uh, buy the ones from the manufacturer and they're not third party, they tend to fall apart. Or you can go one of these phones with a Bluetooth, which I turn it on, I Bluetooth it, which is its own little wireless connection to the data collector or receiver. And I um, stick it in my pocket. Or people make these handy little pouches to hang it on the pole. That's pretty cool. So, actually that's... I'm not going to answer that. Your receivers can have capability for this. On some receivers, you can, you know, have by the radio that snaps into here for uh, base, uh, you know, base and typical base and rover operations. There are even uh, trying to hide uh, hide brands. Is uh, you can get one with the uh, CDMA cellular attachment in there or GPRS for different types of, of rovers. This also Bluetooths to your data collector to avoid a lot of, of